Hello everyone and welcome back to Agriculture Insight. Is your busy life stressing you out? If so, come with us and immerse yourself in the endless wheat fields stretching across America, where golden wheat is ripe and ready for harvest. In 2023, American farmers harvested an incredible 49.3 million tons of wheat, contributing significantly to the global economy and food security. That's an impressive number. But do you know the secret behind achieving such a massive yield? It's all thanks to advanced agricultural technology and modern harvesting systems that American farmers have adopted. Today, we're taking a trip to Kansas, North Dakota, and Montana, America's top wheat-producing states. Join the farmers as we follow the process from planting to harvest. Explore the cutting-edge technologies that make their work more efficient and get an up-close look at how wheat is harvested and processed into products you've probably never seen before. Ready to go? Let's get this journey started. Growing and harvesting wheat requires a combination of modern agricultural methods, from selecting seeds and caring for the crops, to harvesting with advanced technology. Many farms in the U.S. produce wheat for various purposes, such as flour production, cereals, and bread products. The price of wheat is around $250 per ton. Wheat harvesting season in the U.S. mainly occurs in the summer, from June to August, depending on the region and climate conditions. This is when the wheat has reached maturity, with an ideal moisture level for harvesting and processing. Farmers carefully choose the exact time based on the crop's development and the type of wheat being grown. On large farms, modern machinery like combined harvesters is used to harvest the wheat. These machines not only cut the wheat but also thresh the grain from the stalk, making the harvesting process faster and more efficient. Fast forward to September or October and a new wheat growing season kicks off as the weather cools down after the scorching summer days. Most farms in the U.S. plant winter wheat. Different wheat varieties have different growth cycles, typically taking 120 to 150 days to reach full maturity. Kansas, with its mild winters, warm summers, flat plains, and moderate rainfall, offers the perfect natural conditions, making it the largest wheat producing state in the country. The wheat growing process begins with selecting the right seeds. Farmers usually purchase wheat seeds from reputable seed companies. Before doing so, they check all the conditions of the seeds, including germination rate, origin, nutrient analysis, and field testing. The wheat seeds are treated with chemicals to protect the crops from threats like pests, mold, and other adverse factors during the germination and early growth stages. After each season, the soil used for growing wheat becomes compacted and overgrown with weeds, reducing its looseness. Before planting wheat, farmers must till the soil to loosen it up and create ideal conditions for wheat roots to grow deep into the ground. Tractors with plows are used in the fields, following predetermined rows with plowing depths typically ranging from 20 to 30 centimeters to ensure the topsoil is thoroughly loosened. Once the soil has been tilled, the prepared seeds are loaded into the compartments of a seed drill to continue their journey across the field. As the machine moves across the field, the wheat seeds are automatically dropped into the soil through holes in the seed drill. Modern seed drills can plant evenly, quickly, and accurately over large areas. After sowing, wheat requires careful attention, particularly in providing adequate water and nutrients. Many wheat farms are equipped with automated irrigation systems. One of the most common systems used in wheat fields is the sprinkler irrigation system. This system consists of water nozzles installed along pipelines, which create water sprays or small showers that mimic natural rainfall. Additionally, there are high-pressure sprinkler systems that feature a central water pipe capable of rotating 360 degrees, allowing for uniform water distribution over the field. Farmers often use synthetic fertilizers that contain nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium to provide the necessary nutrients for the crops. 
About two months into the growth process, wheat heads start to appear at the top of the stems. Each wheat head contains both male and female flowers on the same plant, allowing wheat to self-pollinate without the need for wind or insects. When the wheat plants turn a straw yellow or brown color, it's a sign that the crop is mature and ready for harvest. The plants will be fully dry and the wheat heads will have a uniform golden color. The entire harvesting process is handled by machinery. The use of modern equipment allows American farmers to harvest tens of tons of wheat in just a few hours. The combined harvester plays a key role in this process, with each machine costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. It integrates three main functions, cutting, threshing, and separating the grain, in one seamless step. The combined harvester can cover large areas quickly, saving both time and labor. The wheat grains are carefully harvested with minimal breakage or damage compared to manual methods. As the machine moves through the field, the cutter bar at the front slices the wheat plants close to the ground. Once cut, the wheat plants are carried into the machine via a conveyor belt, preparing them for the threshing and separating process. A rotating shaft system will separate the grain from the wheat stalk. They will then go through a screening machine to remove impurities and leave only the wheat grains. The grain is then transported onto the machine, ready for transport to the truck, and the excess straw is discharged directly outside. Once the grain tank on the harvester is full, the wheat grains are transferred to trucks or trailers to be transported to storage facilities. Wheat is typically stored in tall cylindrical silos made of steel or concrete, capable of storing large quantities of grain. The silos protect the wheat from environmental factors such as rain, sunlight, and pests. Inside the silo, there is an elevator system that makes it easy to transport large quantities of wheat grain. After the combined harvester cuts and separates the grain, the leftover straw remains on the field. A baler is used to gather the straw and compress it into bales for easy transport and storage. But depending on the type of baler, the straw can be compressed into either rectangular or round bales. Straw bales can be used for various purposes, such as livestock feed or composting for organic fertilizer. After being harvested, wheat grains can be used as seeds or sent to factories for processing into flour. From flour, familiar foods like bread, croissants, and instant noodles can be made. Now let's take a tour of a flour mill, a bread factory, a croissant factory, and an instant noodle factory. First, let's visit the flour processing factory. Here, the wheat is passed through a cleaning system to remove dust, stones, husks, and other impurities. This process ensures the quality of the grain before milling. The cleaned wheat is then sent to the milling machines. In these machines, the wheat kernels are gradually ground down by rollers or hammer mills, producing coarse flour. During this process, the bran is separated from the inner part of the grain. After milling, the flour is sifted through filters to classify it by fineness. The fine flour is separated and prepared for packaging. Once the flour meets the desired quality, it is packed into bags or shipment to the market or stored in the factory's warehouse before distribution. Next, let's visit the bread factory. The main ingredients include wheat flour, yeast, water, salt, sugar, and fat. These ingredients are placed in large mixers to form a dough. This process activates the yeast and creates the gluten structure in the dough. After mixing, the dough is left to rise for about one to two hours, allowing it to expand and develop its soft, airy texture. Once risen, the dough is lightly kneaded again to release air and then divided into smaller portions according to the standard weight for each type of bread. A dough divider ensures the portions are uniform in size. The divided dough is then shaped into loaves on an assembly line ready to be baked in ovens at approximately 250 degrees C, 480 degrees C, for around 30 minutes. Once baked, the bread is golden brown with a crispy crust and a soft interior. After baking, the bread is cooled on conveyor belts. Once fully cooled, it is packaged in bags to keep it fresh for longer. Next, let's head to the croissant factory. The process here is almost identical to that of bread, with one key difference. The dough is rolled out evenly into thin sheets before being cut into smaller pieces and shaped into croissants.
After baking, the golden croissants are packaged on the production line and made ready for the market. Finally, we visit the instant noodle factory. The main ingredients include wheat flour, cooking oil, salt, spices, and safe additives. Before processing, the wheat flour undergoes strict quality control in the lab to ensure its standards. The flour, along with other ingredients like water and salt, is placed in large mixers. The dough mixing and kneading process is fully automated, ensuring the dough reaches the required smooth and elastic consistency to form noodles. Once kneaded, the dough is rolled into thin sheets by rolling machines. These sheets are then cut into thin, uniform noodle strands by an automatic cutting machine. The thickness and size of the noodles are closely controlled to ensure consistency. After cutting, the noodles are sent into a steamer. This process is fully enclosed, using steam and standard pressure. Once steamed, the noodles are cut to shorter lengths and placed into frying molds. The oil temperature is kept stable, with fresh oil continually added to replace the evaporated oil. After frying, the noodles are cooled before moving to the packaging section. The packaging line wraps the noodles with seasoning packets, ready for distribution. The noodle packages are then transported via conveyor belts for boxing and prepared for the market. Now you have a complete overview of how American farmers harvest millions of tons of wheat each year. From preparing the soil and caring for the crops to using modern machinery to harvest and transport the wheat to processing factories. It's a long process filled with dedication, precision, and hard work. So the next time you enjoy a slice of soft bread or a delicious pastry, remember all the effort that went into bringing those wheat grains to you. Thank you for joining me throughout this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more fascinating insights into the world of agriculture. Goodbye and see you in the next video.